Good morning, I'm Caroline Troopgill. Welcome to this news briefing of the 252nd National Meeting and Exposition of the American Chemical Society in Philadelphia. We're joined today by Antisar Hlil from Texas A&M University in Qatar. She will be talking to us about her work on a completely degradable synthetic rubber that could make tires more environmentally friendly. Ms. Hlil? Yes, good morning. Thank you for having me today to describe our uh, project and the new idea for uh, a strategy of synthesis innovation uh, recyclable uh, polymer, which is basically is the additive in the tire. Uh, in the beginning, I I like first to thank uh, the source who fund uh, our project, which is uh, Qatar National Research uh, Fund, is the uh, Qatar Foundation, and our team uh, with the PI uh, uh, lead by Dr. Hassan Bazi, Dr. Mohammed Al Hashimi, and Saeed Al Mir. And we are three researchers inside uh, this uh, project, uh, Dr. Robert Tuba and uh, Janusz Balug and me. Uh, basically, we are here today to describe the synthesis of uh, polypentanamer, which is um, can use uh, for developing high performance, uh, uh, high performance uh, recyclable uh, uh, tire additive. Uh, as we know, the polypentanamer is uh, used a long time ago uh, uh, because of unique. Uh, poly uh, and the physical property which has similar to the rubber. What we're doing today, we try to functionalize and we go further to this polypentanamer by adding functional group which is silicon. And silicon can uh, do the job better than the polypentanamer by itself. We had carried on in our lab uh, we performed the reaction of first the polypentanamer by himself. Secondly, we used the functionalized polypentanamer with the silicon and we made the polypentanamer uh, 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 functionalized silicon. And in the meantime, to combine the physical property for both of them. In the polymer area, the best thing what we do, we do the copolymer between both of them. So we did the copolymerization. What we looking for from that? The polymer, it's ready. And we, uh, our team, we looked further. Can we depolymerize this polymer, recyclable, to get back to the monomer? In our lab with the experiment, we demonstrate first the same thing, as we start, we polymerize the polypentanamer, we depolymerize the polypentanamer, and we get the uh, pure monomer with the uh, uh, pentan. And uh, if people like to see that more with the more details, we, we have a poster. Yesterday, we gave the first session, and today also we have all uh, the details, how we did it, how we prove it by analysis, it's all described in that poster. Uh, the same thing we did with the uh, other polymer, with the, which is uh, contain uh, siloxid. We depolymerize it and full, we uh, recover the monomers, which is the functionalite uh, monomers. Um, the concept of this, we use low catalyst loading, reasonable time for reaction, and easy monomer to uh, uh, synthesize and to recover at the same time. Uh, recyclable uh, tire from uh, petrochemical, I say it why we choose exactly cyclopentan. It's the byproduct which is can use today all the manufacturing to making the cyclopentan from cyclopentadiene, which is cyclopentadiene coming from diet cyclopentadiene, which is the by byproduct in petrochemical industrial. It contain about 25%. If you put the others um, containing of C5 uh, uh, carbohydrate contain another 5% is 30%. Basically, in uh, in the industry, what they use it, they use it uh, to burn it off, like 
uh, NAFTA. So we try really to recover this uh, product and we use it as raw material to achieve to our uh, product uh, today. And um, uh, why we went to the tire, we know the uh, trans polypentanamer can be used not only as additive in tire and elastomer is also in packaging in medical area, but we concern about the tire, we're looking for uh, sustainable, greener, better environment. And uh, uh, tire engineering today, they really looking everywhere to uh, make uh, uh, recyclable the composite of the tire. And we, you know, we start with the idea. And as you know, it's uh, having a great idea is easier to knock the door and we start the project. Very good, thank you. Um, are there any questions? I'd ask that you please wait for the microphone and state your name and affiliation before asking your question. Hi, so it's Kath O'Driscoll from Chemistry and Industry magazine. Yes. Um, how much of this synthetic rubber additive is actually used in a, a standard tire? Okay, um, a standard tire used, um, uh, okay, I just give you a uh, roughly idea about whole things of the tire. Uh, the tire is contain about um, 47, 48 percent of the rubber, 22 percent of the filling, and uh, 30 percent of others uh, additive, uh, which can be sulfur, can be carbon black, can be silicone, a lot of really toxic material we added <laughs> to the tire to make it very tough and used. So I I talking about the thirty percent. It's the additive. And um, can you say how the performance compares of this synthetic rubber with uh, the conventional uh, rubber, the, uh, the new rubber that you've made? Uh, it's uh, the synthesis for us. It's uh, I can describe it as a chemist. It's not difficult for to making this compound as uh, additive. Uh, if we go to the next step, we haven't done any test yet because we are in the fundamentals work now to make the material and we scale it. We still need to scale it up and to compare it with other uh, additive. But uh, from standpoint, that's how the reaction work and we can recycle. So it's really big and good to start for us. Um. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Ben Valsley, Chemistry World. Uh, I'm, I'm just wondering, in the recycling tests that you've done, have, yeah. you, have you been doing that using your pure polymer, or have you incorporated that polymer into the sort of mix, the composite that you would see in a tyre, and then extracted it back from that? That's very good the questions. Uh, thank you for asking. Um, you know, like uh, any starting work in the laboratory with the smell or the small um, uh, place and uh, resource, uh, we have to start what we have in our hand. So first we have to prove that the reaction it's work completely by itself. That's what we did by polymerizing the compound, depolymerizing by himself copolymerizing, decopolymerizing. Uh, now, we haven't yet went to the next step. That we take all the composite. Uh, it's still work going on in the lab. We prepare our own composite because if we need to replace, we have to really replace everything. So it's still work ongoing. Thank, Thank you. And you were saying uh, cyclopentene tends to just be burnt off you know, used, used as a, a fuel, essentially. Uh, are there any other competing technologies that are starting to use cyclopentene? And if there are, do you think that's likely to impact the economic argument for using this in place of traditional rubber? Um, uh, on my knowledge, yes, there is another um, uh, resource that they start to using this, uh, like using, you know, they're using as naft and we is cheap. Uh, oil or cheap uh, fuel to burn. Uh, that's what we're using today. And uh, 
some of them, you know, after you go to um, a refinery, it's uh, uh, it's a breaking down, and from this we get at the end four percent of this. So even what they get today, it's really very small amount. But we like to use it from the beginning when the refinery uh, drop it. So I see. Thank you. Welcome. Bill Buslik, Office of Public Affairs, ACS. Um, when, if you're uh, it compounding this rubber, uh, rubber with these compounds, and they're so easy to degrade, doesn't that affect the, uh, the quality of the rubber? Uh, rubber, you uh, particularly, uh, I noticed that uh, that one one of the points you make is degradable at, at lower temperatures. Yes. Well. Uh, Tires run at under very high temperatures, uh, right. even if you're just running on the road. Yeah. Uh, don't you want uh, want the tire to hold up? Yeah, I we, you know, our tension is really to keep the tire lifetime longer, and we didn't need it to put it on the road at 50 degree and degradable. This depolymerization de cannot go by itself or only by heat. Even if you heat it at 700 degrees, still the tire, you know, strong. It's only decomposed by adding the catalyst. That's our main reason. We do equilibrium reaction metathesis by making the polymer ring opening metathesis and then depolymerizing by using the same catalyst. If absent the catalyst, Whatever tire run on the road, nothing happened to him. So only in the presence of the catalyst. Well, it it it, it was a fair question because <laughs> no, a no, it's really very fair question. It, 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 I it should mention that in the beginning. A too. catalyst itself is is only encouraging the reaction to go on because because the reaction exists backwards forwards without a catalyst. It's just the speed of the reaction that that's being changed. And in this case, it's uh, the reaction what we doing is uh, equilibrium uh, reaction. And this is metathesis. Mm -hmm. If in the chemistry, if you talk about metathesis, um, Robert Grabs when discover his uh, uh, catalyst, and that's the make this catalyst very successful today and using it every field in the world because um, the mechanism of the catalyst, I, I can put it to you very simple. You have a compound like this, and this is my reaction coming. Mm. To spread it, this has two head and the body. It's kick the body out, and our compound coming here. So that's kicking. It cannot happen by himself by the reaction without metathesis. So changing the place. So that changing the place is a stick there, the compound with the uh, like uh, intermediate with the uh, complex it's making. And that's the catalyst role, it's very important. And without catalyst, we cannot achieve to get the depolymerization. If we heat the compound only by himself, we cannot get the depolymerization. We test that in a small scale in the lab. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. So it's cathode driscoll chemistry and industry. I think you mentioned that you'd functionalize the polymer with silicone, was it? It's a uh, siloxy. And it's in the, you want the next describe? slide. This one? This one? Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's a uh, siloxyl. So uh, we just take the, uh, we take only the cyclopentane and we uh, functionalize it either with uh, siloxy, etoxy, methoxy, or uh, oxid uh, TMS. And what's the purpose of that functionalization? Uh, the purpose to get better property for the uh, increase. Either we work uh, concentrate on the TG, concentrate on elastomer of the polypentanomer it can get better cross-linking when the presence of uh, oxyl, uh, oxylyl or uh, any silicon compound. And uh, maybe in the future we will 
neck another door to functionalize with other compounds that can help us to improve the physical property of the... So uh, what does that mean in terms of tire performance, those properties that you just talked about, okay. elastomer and TG? And, and uh, uh, what, what, how does that mean in okay, terms of what the tire That's can making do? the tire, <coughs> well, as I mentioned before, to um, make uh, the lifetime of the tire better, longer, to make the tire stronger and tougher. And um, I give you example in... Um, Middle East, they looking for the tire which can uh, get, uh, you know, uh, survive the high temperature. In uh, Canada, we have the, you know, we have to change the tire in winter and summer, and some people use four season tire. So this property, it's coming from the additive to the uh, tire, to the rubber of the tire. So we try really hard to, uh, compromise which is better property can give to the uh, tire. Okay, thank you. Okay, one last question. This is from online from Christine Su, Office of Public Affairs. She's asking, do you know how much waste cyclopentene is generated from the petrochemical industry? And would this volume be enough to meet the demand for new tires? Um, it's uh, in the industrial, in my uh, knowledge, like what uh, we know, uh, I think it's uh, just coming from petrochemical uh, industrial because that's what they're using after that to take the cyclopentane uh, to uh, uh, making the polymer of uh, cyclopentanamer. Um, in the industrial, if we use the for now, because nobody now to recycle uh, chemically the uh, tire, so I have no information about that. Good. Further questions? Thank you very much. Uh, the archived version of this session will soon be posted at bit.ly slash ACS Live Philadelphia. Please join us for our next press conference today at 1015 on potentially life-saving nanoparticles that speed blood clotting. Thank you. Thank you very much.